are here again with my beautiful Amiga 500 and the Aka 500 Plus, which we've been having fun with in the last video. If you haven't watched it yet, then do um, check out that in the description below or the letter I here. Anyway, today I've got my comeback flashcards. Well, this one's basically the Amiga C thing, which you see in my videos. Uh, it's all it is is just like a compact flash card, which I use on the Amiga 1200 PCM CI adapter. I um, just use it to transfer files, so I could just use it for this also. It's formatted um, in FAT32. Now I got another compact flash card, and I wish to install and show you the installation. Not only that, I want to try and dual boot it. You know, just to kind of mess around. It's an experiment with it since it's new. Yes, I've still got a weakness for Workbench 1.3. The color scheme and everything is just, it's early years nostalgia. So I wish to have like a dual boot of 1.3 and 3.1 on this thing. Yeah, I've never dual booted on the Amiga before, other than, you know, going to the early startup menu and then just select the device to boot. Just a couple of things before we continue. A little news from our Amiga land. <laughs> I've uh, written my first article for What IFF. It's a disk based magazine which you can find on whatiff.info. I've linked the site in the description below. They deal with Amiga software and hardware specifically, creativity and productivity instead of games. Do check them out. You can find my article and the interview with me on issue 5 of the magazine. I'll also be contributing to future issues. Also, Unijoy will be launching a Kickstarter for that uh, joystick prototype, which I reviewed some time ago. Check out the description below for more information on that. Also, do check out my review video if you haven't done so already. Now let's continue. Let's get started and geek out and have some fun with this. Insert the boot card here. Turn it on. And the first thing what I'm going to do here is install this as you know, with the when you go into the installer menu, you have the auto installer. I'm going to show you how to do that first. Now that is pretty much straightforward. You put your card in, press F1. It literally does everything for you. And as you can see here, all you need to do is like you know F1 auto installer. Uh, it just does everything for you. Uh, if you want to do the old school way, F3, which will it'll mount the six. 3.1 discs, which is kind of cool actually, and um, it'll boot from them, well, the installer disc of it, so you can just like do it the old school way. As it says here, use this if you want to do a custom installation or if you want to experience how installing back in the 1990s. I mean, I'm gonna have to do it this way, but I'll do F1 just to show you. Since it's a new card, I can just like, you know, show you and then just like wipe it clean. So let's go F1 and just go through it. It's literally straightforward as it can be. It, is, it does everything for you. I mean, it's unpacking the virtual disks now. It's kind of cool, that just got everything you you need there to kind of just like set up and go. So as you can see, it's starting the Aka Plus installer here. And let's install it in English. And it's found this. That's the thing, you cannot do any custom installation. It'll just find this and it'll just create a boot partition and it'll create a work partition, which is just like the, and it'll use PFS. So let's go into that. As you can see here, ready to install media, yes. Install now. As you can see here, it's formatting and writing to the disk. Literally set to go. Just took like five minutes. Reset the Amiga. And it should load in your. Well, it load in here. You just go to the configuration in there. F1, and it should load into your. Here we go. Alright, so as you can see here, it's created two partitions. The main boot partition. And that is 400, basically 500 megs, roughly, that it's um, created. And then the rest of the drive, which is, what? 1.5 gig? Where's the other 16 gig going? Okay, so there is one problem with um, doing it automatically like this. I'm not sure if it's actually used the entirety of the, the actual compact flashcard. 
Okay, so now that you've seen the OS installed with the auto installer, I'm going to do things a bit more complicated now and use the, <laughs> you know, F the um, F3 option, which is the manual installer. And yes, it's because I just want to make things a bit more interesting and I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> But actually, um, I'll tell you how much of a good punishment I am. I want to attempt to do a dual boot on this. 1.3 and 3.1. Okay, so my thought on this, or my plan on this, is basically two partitions, two boot partitions, sorry, uh, at the beginning. The first one being 1.3, Workbench 1.3, or OS 1.3. The second one being OS 3.1. Now, the reason why in this order is because Kickstart 3.1 has an early boot menu. Workman, uh, sorry, Kickstart 1.3 does not. So if you just boot into Kickstart 1.3, it will just load straight into it. Fair enough. That's cool, right? The second one, if you actually um, boot into Kickstart 3.1, it load into 1.3 also, un until you do the early boot menu thing and select the second partition. That's exactly it. That's how I'm gonna do this. Yeah, <laughs> there's no like I'm not. I don't have any magical solution for you know selecting which hard drive I'd boot up. That would be amazing. How you do it with Linux and the sticks like this? I would love to do that. If there's any way of doing that, and anyone knows of any way out there, I tried finding it. I couldn't find any. Please let me know on the Amiga that is. So let's get started with this. Um, do F3 and. So there you go, it um, decrunched or de decompressed the disks and we're in the thing. Right, so let's go into hard drive tools, the hard drive toolbox, and have a, have a look at our thing. Right, one thing which I'm not sure if the auto install does or not is okay, so you have change drive type thing, yeah? define new. As far as I know, this is required. You read the configuration of the drive, and you know it reads everything that is on the drive itself, and then you press OK and just define that as the new one, and use that. Now, yes, I do. Now, this part I'm wondering if it's done in the automatic um, installer or not. You know, if you know about, if you know this, please let me know in the comments below. All right. So let's go to now partition. Actually, saved. Okay, so let's partition the drive. We have, you know, just two basic partitions here. Right, so we want partition one, which is going to be Workbench 1.3. So let's just do that a gig. No, not a gig, 500 meg. Because it's just going to be the OS disks anyway. I'm going to do the thingy space afterwards. Anyway, so yeah. So I want to use PFS3 as the file system, right? So I've downloaded PFS3 AIO from Aminet and just put it on this floppy disk. I don't know why I put it on the floppy disk, I just did. It's got this info on this as well, so I just added it. Right, so that's in there. I want to add, update the file system. So add a new file system. Mm, no. So DF4 or DF0. PFS 3 AIO. PFS 3 AIO. Okay, so. So load that up, and you have to put the dust type in. I'll tell you what, what that is. Right, so for PFS, it is 504, 653, and 03. Okay, so there we go, it says custom file system, you press OK, right that's done, now you do change, and you can see here, PFS3, it adds that to the list, before that was on there of course. Now the max transfer here, you have to change that, to 1FE00. Okay. 
Okay, so that's done for partition one. DH1, it's gonna be the second one, make it bootable, change its um, file system, max transfer, change that to 1FE00. Press OK. All right, so that's the second one sorted. Now let's do a new partition for um, the over workbench 1.3. And that is just the workbench 1.3 files. Let's just give it a gig. So this is going to make, you know, there you go. Uh, yeah, change again the file system. PFS3, 1FE00. And this one we're going to do is just, what the freak's going here? Okay, that meant to be there. All right, this one, we just slide it down here. And then the rest of it is just going to be storage for um, 3.1 or whatever else. It's just storage, basically. All right. So that's that. And then forgot for this partition, um, DH2. All right. So that's good. Which one? Da, da. Okay. Both. Of now this one, DH3. Change that again. PFS3. Just max transfer to 1F. Oh, wait. You know something? One thing's important. Yeah? I've noticed a bit of a thing. Right. Do we change the custom file system? Right. We've done PFS3. That's cool. When you do this, I forgot about this. When you do this, 1FE00, right? Don't just press OK, you have to press Enter. And then you do that. And you see it's there. Have you noticed what's just happened? Because I did not press Enter, it didn't change it. That's Things like that get you. <laughs> I didn't notice that, I just caught that just then when I, test, when I checked the rest of them. So let's check DH1 now. Change. There you go, it's not changed it. So, 1FE00. Return. Or enter, whichever. Anyway, irrelevant. Let's just change these into 1Fe's. <laughs> one FE. One FE00. Enter. This one too. This one I think it's no. One V zero zero. Enter. Yeah. Okay. Right. Go back in here. Check. Change. It's fine. It's there. Go back in here. Check. Change. It's all fine. Good. Yeah. It's all good now. Now then. Come out of that. Save changes to drive. Yes. Now then, we exit it and it'll ask to reboot, and which is required. However, the problem with this, what do you keep coming up for? I don't understand this thing. Can you explain what this stupid screen means? You'll have to restart or reboot the Amiga. See, the problem with this is, if you were to do this and then you have to reboot, you have to go into installer and you have to press um, F3 again and then it'll uh, you'll go through the process of unpacking the disks again. However, if you've got a Workbench 3.1 disk, you know, or an image in the Godeg drive, it'll save you some time. So let's load this in here. Right, so we've got to go to F8 and DF0 override. Yeah, the F0 DF1 boot select. I'm gonna save that actually, because it comes in very useful. Press any key, and then boot, and then hopefully it should detect this as DF0 or DF1. Okay, so you've loaded Workbench, and you'll see these DH0 noodles. <laughs> on these. So you have to format each of these now. So literally just like format disk. And 
I'm going to do this OS 1.3. Quick format, always quick format, there's no point doing long formats unless you want to sit there for ages and you've got loads of time to kill, which I personally don't. So that's done. We do format disk OS 3.1 quick format. So these are the two bootable drives. You've got 1.3 there, 3.1 there. And uh, DH2, let's do format disk here. By the way, this is experimental. I'm just doing this dual boot thing as an experiment, seeing how it is, if it's feasible, if it's not, I'm just gonna revert it back. So, um, 1.3 files. Quick format, yes. And DH3 on a storage. Yeah, freaking diddles. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's your storage drive. Right, so let's um, proceed in installing OS 1.3. Um, what I'm gonna do here is just do a mock, well not mock install, but like just install the first disk. I'm not gonna install the entire set. So I'm gonna open disk master on this. OS 1.3 or DH thingy, so DF0. Just insert it in my Vicarage 1.3 disk, just copy it across, hopefully it should all be good. So... Okay, so we're done, Workbench 1.3, however, I want to do one thing, make sure I do one thing. And that is install um, just PFS AIO, PFS3 AIO in the L directory of OS 1.3. So, oh, that's not going to work, is it? I don't think it anyway. Now this is where the second one comes in useful, the second slot here. It is hot swappable and you can use FAT32 formatted disks. This is my Amiga Safe disk, which I use on my Amiga 1200 PCMCI to transfer files. Just insert that and it actually just loads it in. No drivers needed or no CFD, no FAT95 needed. It's just all there. Now as you can see here, it's just appeared on the screen. So, let's refresh this. And you'll see it there, Amiga Safe. Right, this is, I do have um, a copy of PFS AIO here. So let's just copy these into the L directory there. Good. Now, let's restart this. I mean, I don't know, I've never done 1.3 install before, especially with PFS. So let's restart this and see if it first. This will be with the 3.1 ROM, of course. Oh, you freak. Okay, so that's loading 1.3. Now let's try load this with Kickstart 1.3. Restart, left mouse button, keep it hold. We'll take it into the ACA 500 plus menu and F2 boot into 1.3. Now let's see if it loads into that. Okay, fantastic. Picked it up straight away. So it's the first time I've tested the PFS3 AIO on um, 1.3 and it works perfectly. Oh my god, look how beautiful this workbench looks. Why did they change it into that grey and drab? I love this. So anyway, let's proceed in installing OS 3.1. So start left mouse button takes it into that menu um, I'm gonna do obviously load it up with um, let's install the workbench disk here actually uh, sorry insert the workbench disk here okay so install disk is in let's do F1 I'm supposed to pick up the floppy drive first. Weak 
clearly hasn't. Let's go into the early boot menu. Oh, do you know something? This is annoying. When you're on a fast Amiga, and when you have a hard drive on top of that, getting into the early startup menu is... the early boot menu is a pain. It's just got a, such a small window. Oh no, I went into this. Okay, I don't know how, it's just got such a small freaking window. Right, that's what I want to use as boot. Okay, so let's install 3.1 3 in that partition. The only thing I'm going to find really annoying about this is the getting into the early boot menu. Of course, I use um, OS 3.1 more than 1.3, but the window for getting into the early boot menu when you have a fast Amiga is so, like, it, it's so small. So I think that's going to annoy me. <laughs> but I'm just... I'm gonna prove that the, that the dual boot concept thing is here. With like, Amiga's got its boot selector. So, now then. Still release 3.1, intermediate user, because expert user is too faffy and asks me too many questions. Um, proceed. No, I do not. I want to install it in the 3.1. Oops. Uh, oh, parent. Yes. 3.1 folder. Okay, so that's merrily installing things on its way. I'll be back when it's done. So there we go, that's done. And we just... Okay, so this is um, loaded, of course, version 1.3, because that is on the first... Um, partition, the first bootable partition. And we need to make it see the second one, so we have to go into the early boot of menu. Oh, it's annoying this! Oh, you can't do it! Why? Why do you not catch the early boot menu? Stupid small window. Okay, after like so many attempts, I'm talking like 20 attempts, to try and get into the stupid boot menu, it doesn't do it, right? However, when you do that, and you move the mouse around, like this, it freaking gets in there! And each time it works like this now. So it's not just that, you have to goof around with a stupid mouse. Each time. So it's goofing around with this. Maybe it's to do with this mouse. Okay, maybe it's to do with this. <laughs> anyway, at least I found a way of doing it. So, boot finally is showing you. Then, DH1. That that, which will take you into 3.1. There we go. 3.1. We have it here. So, technically it, you know, the dual boot thing works. It's a little faffy with, it, with this, but it does work. Ideally, I would love a way to have like a selector, a boot selector menu, uh, like, you know, you have in Linux systems and you just go up and down and so forth, and you select 1.3 or 3.1. That'd be amazing. But, you know, I don't see anything like this out there for the Amiga. It seems to be everyone just talks about the early boot menu. I don't know. I'm going to be using 3.1 mostly. So to do this each time is going to be a bit annoying. Um, so I might actually use uh, separate contract flashcards, but there you go, dual boot actually works. So if, we, if I were to reset, uh, reboot the Amiga here, and then just let it boot in, it will boot into 1.3, but using the 3.1 kick ROMs. However, if we do that on just the left mouse button, you go into the ICA 500 Plus menu, 
What's it not do right now? Okay, go to the ACA 500 plus menu, press F2 for 1.3 ROM, kick ROM, and it loads in do. 1.3. You also know, think this is the same image of Workbench 1.3 which uh, we had back in the day, and for some reason it had this pencil as an icon. As a sorry, a cur mouse cursor. I always, in, I always like this pencil for some reason. So any other Workbench 1.3 release I've seen after this doesn't have this pencil. So maybe my brother installed it, but I've kept this one. I never installed this one because of this pencil. I know it's silly little things like that, but it's how I remember it, and I really like it. A cute little pencil. As I said, what I'll do is I'll go with this for now this um, dual boot setup here for now and um, if I just find it awkward I'll just use separate comeback flashcards because I mean yes Workbench 1.3 it's nostalgic and stuff but I know I won't be using it as much as 3.1 so you know it'd be just handy to have the 3.1 in all the time and if I want to use 1.3 then just like swap the comeback flashcards out I'll probably end up doing that rather than a dual boot Okay, so there we go. So this is, you know, installing 3.1 with the auto installer first, and then doing a dual boot system with 1.3 and 3.1. You know, I just want to see if the proof of concept works. It does work, just a bit faffy, but it does work. And uh, there we go. It makes it makes me smile each time when I see Workbench 1.3. It doesn't have that multi-select square thing <laughs> that I'm used to. But yeah, it does make me smile. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for your likes, your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more. For now, I will say adios. Thanks so much to all my patrons for supporting my channel. Especially to you very kind top tier supporters of mine who deserve an extra special thanks. Rich Garbett, Electronscape, Axel Dominator, Aaron Metcalf, Corey Ostman, Mark Bosak, Starlight Minako, and Chris Sebelinski. Have a lovely evening everyone. Until next time, adios! Music